We've got some fantastic autumn weather at the moment. It's really, really warm. It's bright, sunny. There's virtually no wind, a calm sea. It's, it's, it's a real pleasure. So Linda and I have decided to take advantage of that and spend the afternoon down on the rocks, have a bit of fun, do a bit of fishing and see what we can catch. And the plan is that if, if we're lucky and we catch something we can eat, we brought the portable barbecue with us and we're going to cook the catch down here on, on the rocks and really enjoy some very, very fresh fish. Now, this is something that we like to do each year. And years ago, when we were a lot, lot younger, we used to do it quite often, come go fishing somewhere and if you're successful and then cook it there and then. It really, it really is a, a treat. Okay, so we've got different, we're trying different methods. We've got a couple of spinning rods to do a bit of spinning. Maybe, might get lucky and catch mackerel or garfish. You never, you never know your luck. Bass, possibly. But to edge our bets, really, we've also brought a float fishing setup with us. And again, that would be for mackerel and possibly garfish. I know there's a few garfish around at the moment and we actually really enjoy eating garfish. So I've got a float fishing set up and I've got some baits with me, uh, some little strips of mackerel and I've got some squid with me as well. So basically that's it. We caught it just in time. The tide, we're just coming up to low water now. So we're gonna catch the flooding tide and we'll see what happens. But I'll just tell you about the rules first. The rules are, that Linda is not to catch more than me, or, or I'm not allowed to blank and then Linda catch. So, so, so that, that's the rules. I'll catch the first one. You will catch, the, yeah, she normally does catch the first one. What we've decided to do is do float fishing and spinning to start with. So Linda's out with the float and I'm gonna do the spinning. At the moment, because it's low water, it's very, very shallow close in. It's all right further out. It's very, very shallow. So uh, I know this area very well. And it would be a little bit awkward for, for Linda when she's really in the lure in, close in, and uh, be too easy to get snagged. But when, uh, when the tides come in, in a bit, then, then Linda can have a go at spinning. Um, unless the float fishing proves to be more, su more successful. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin. And basically, I think because it's with the grass mackerel, which have been hard to come by from the shore. I did, I did okay from the shore back in July. I was regularly catching them, but gone a bit quiet now. I think because it's so bright, I'm going to cast out as far as I can to deeper water as I can. And just hope, hope that maybe a few mackerel might be, might be moving through. The other good thing about mixing up the methods is with me spinning, if, if there's garfish around, they normally give themselves away where you start feeling the tugs. Tugs on the, on the spinner, on the lure, without, without actually hooking them. And that would that, that, be great to actually know if there's any, any garfish around. Right, I got something, and whatever it, whatever it is, it took it right on the drop. Now this this would be absolutely great if it's um, if it's a mackerel. What is it, Linda? Can you see? Oh, it's a, it's a garfish. Well, looks like we're, <coughs> we're going to be having the, uh, the barbecue. Quite interesting actually, me catching that garfish on the spinner because 
from my experience, when, you, when you're trying to catch garfish with a spinner, it doesn't seem to matter what, whether you use a small spinner and small hooks or um, bigger hooks, you normally get loads and loads of tugs and then just hook the occasional one, basically because they've got that sort of awkward mouth, that swordfish mouth, and there's not a lot of hook in the area until, unless it gets back in the mouth towards the head. So usually, the easiest way to catch garfish, garfish is what Linda's doing. Uh, the float fishing with a, with a piece of squid or a piece of mackerel or sand eel. Or float spinning. When you slowly reel the piece of, piece of bait in and then the, it, it, it stimulates the garfish to chase in and they come and tug it, then because you're float fishing, you can just stop and, and let the garfish give it time to get the bait into its mouth and then, and then off it goes. Now I know uh, many people have uh, told me about the, this silk thread. I've actually got a spinner with silk thread on. I, I experimented with it last year off camera. And yeah, it definitely works. The only drawback I found with, with using a piece of silk thread, in other words, you take the hook off and you replace it with a piece of silk thread. And when the garfish comes and takes the lure, it gets tangled in the silk thread with all its little teeth in the beak. Now, the only thing I, I didn't like about it was that when you've got a garfish that maybe you wanted to put back, it, it's got so tangled in the thread because they spin that it was actually difficult to, to get it untangled um, to release it. So I, I, I wasn't, I didn't really like that, but, um, but I've, got, I've got one with me just in case I have to use it. Well, what are you playing at then? It's, not, it's normally always me. Always, sorry, always you that catches the first fish. Well, I think I was lucky to hook that garfish because at the moment there's definitely not a, lot, not a lot of garfish around. If there was, I'd be constantly feeling the tugs. Tugs on this lure. Well, Linda probably would have had a bite by now, so <clears throat> we're just hoping when it gets a bit deeper the tide has flooded in a bit. Um, if there's anything out there, they'll move a bit closer. But not seeing any bait fish in the water, not seeing any sand hills. As I've said many, many times, it's a real confidence booster when you're standing on the rocks and you're looking down and you see shoals of sand hills, or when you're drawing your lure through, they, they, they panic and they start jumping all over the place. Um, but I haven't, seen, I haven't seen any at the moment yet. Did it go? Yep, 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 yep. Hey! hey. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we're definitely eating. Right, I'll just deal with it. Drink. Well, that's fantastic. One each to eat. What we really, really, really would love to catch now is mackerel. But if we get a few garfish, that's, that's fine. So that's what uh, Linda caught that on. We just got a little, little strip of mackerel, uh, probably about two, just over two inches long on a size. I think it's a size six hook. But for those, just for those of you that have never fished for them, when I was talking about how sometimes in spinning it's difficult to hook them, the reason is because of this, this mouth here, beak, 
well the actual the actual mouth is way back there so what garfish do they'll come in and hit let's say a sand hill with their big stun it and that gives them gives them time to maneuver it back into the mouth there so it can be a little bit difficult to to hook them when you're spinning uh, particularly you know if, they, if they're hitting it at the front of the beak here back here there's a there's a bit more of a hooking area so that's why again this is just for beginners and maybe come down here on holly you want to do a bit of fishing don't do much fishing that's why I float fishing for them with little strips of mackerel little strip, strips of squid is uh, a much much better way to catch them well, that was good wasn't it did, did the flow in, interest me? Because I was watching it. Did it go straight down or did it? No, yeah, it went straight down. Good. Blimmin' kayakers getting in the way of the fishing. I don't know. I mean, who? I mean, who would want to go out on? A, who would want to go out on a kayak? Hey, eh? must be mad. Well, it's the autumn, once again, proving to be the be best time of year here anyway. Certainly at the marks I fish to go fishing for garfish. The autumn, right into November, November November's usually good. Even December, January, we've been getting garfish. And, but at the height of the summer, sort of June, July, sometimes into August, I don't see a garfish. Got, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. You've got to buy it there, Linda. Now. No? Okay, stop. Leave it. You've got it, you've got it. You've got it. Two, one. She's vicious, you know. Yeah, trying to trying to whack me there with the, with the garfish. The depth that I've got the float, I've got to stop there. I probably I've got it about four feet from the surface because, as, as many of you know, but just in case those of you that don't know, garfish like to feed very very close to the surface. So normally anything from a, a foot, two foot, down to about six foot at, at the most for garfish. With, ma with mackerel, if you've got the depth, or well, mackerel will take, of course they'll take it right, just under the surface. But usually, I would say mackerel, maybe six to, or if you're in deep water, let's say six to sort of 15 feet or deeper for mackerel. Um, but garfish, normally always very, very shallow. Well, we're both having a go with the lures now. Linda's spinning now. Basically, it's just to see if we can find a mackerel. I mean, obviously, if there's loads of mackerel around, we'd get, we'd get them float fishing, but... Um, just get a little bit further out with the, with the spinner. You never know, but um, I've got a feeling it's going to be probably just garfish on this session but you never know well it's gone very very quiet now and not even any sign of any garfish so what we might do is start getting the barbecue ready or Linda will start getting the barbecue ready and I'll, I'll carry on fishing for a bit just to see if we if I can pick up a mackerel but it doesn't look too promising so but that's okay, at least we've got something. And we'll probably have a couple of those garfish on the barbecue and, and, and they're going to be great. Right, Linda's getting the barbecue going behind the camera. And uh, I'll carry on, try, try a bit longer for mackerel while the barbecue's get, get, getting going. Then I might actually have a go with the float fishing myself just to see if I can pick up one, one more garfish to take home.
what we're using here is one of these portable barbecues which I'm sure many of you have got absolutely brilliant they just fold fold up flat and uh, very very easy to carry uh, never tried one before so we're trying this for the first time normally when we come do this we, we have those disposable ones but this this is a much much better idea okay I'll get these garfish cleaned up so the first thing I'm going to do is just scrape those green scales off we're just going to have two of them and take the other one home or if I carry on fishing after we've eaten a couple then uh, then take the home as well th those home as well going to do is just have them in pieces like that Well, these won't take very long to cook. So I'll give them a bit of a spray with olive oil. And a bit of salt. They shouldn't take long at all. Fantastic. Can't beat it. Come down to a fantastic location like this and cook these fish straight away in the out in this sort of environment. Brilliant. Just a shame we couldn't get a mackerel as well, but there that's the way it goes. There you go, there's our garfish. If you've never tried garfish before, it's lovely, very, very sweet meat. Similar to mackerel, but a lot sweeter. So what, what, what we're gonna do is peel some off and have some on its own, but pop, pop some in, here, in, in the bun. And that's gonna be absolutely delicious.
that is really really good one thing that's great about the barbecue it just just adds that fantastic flavor as I'm sure many of you will know good job these are done because the the tide the tide is catching us up now we haven't we haven't set this up right right at the back because we wanted to be wanted to be closer to the water um, but no problem it'll put the barbecue out when it splashes up did you enjoy that and the fishing Two one. You won. Again. Well, you can't beat that, can you? Caught and eaten within what? I don't know. Hour and a half. Two hours at the most. We set this up as close to the water as we can for you for your benefit. I think I've got about 15 minutes before we get soaked. Okay, time to call it a day <laughs> before we get drowned. Well, that was good fun, wasn't it? Enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah, it was great. So I hope you enjoyed that as well. This sort of thing is just, it's basically, it's just fun. It's not serious fishing. You just catch whatever you can that you, that you don't mind eat, eating, that you want to eat, and just enjoy the the afternoon or the day or the morning enjoy the surroundings enjoy the fresh fish and basically as I said just have fun so once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching I'm hanging in the sunshine you should hit me with the splash gun so I cool down won't you come on over we can party till the sun's down Baby, let me buy you a drink While we're dancing a blink I could go for some Queen Bee too. This is going